I wanted to weigh in a bit uh, about this issue going on in late 2022, early 2023, in which the military industrial complex uh, is attempting to get a war started uh, between Russia and most of the rest of the world. And the latest news is the uh, German government and the United States government, other governments are continuing to provide all kinds of uh, military armament. This time it's tanks. That, that's the big deal in the news. And this kind of brings us to the root of the issue. Why is it that there is suddenly this issue between the governments who rule the Ukrainian people and the go and the ones who uh, rule the Russian human beings and kind of the long and the short of it is Russia fancies itself as does United States, China uh, as huge world superpowers. They believe that their governments are the most powerful in the world and uh, are always kind of jostling for high position. They want to maintain those top high powerful uh, spots and they want to keep, make sure that other governments don't get ahead of them in being in these high spots. So what's happening is many, many years ago, something called NATO was invented by a, a wide variety of governments. And NATO boiled down in plain English is essentially, we are scared of Russia. We don't like Russia. And if any of us ever doesn't like Russia, like if we get really excited about disliking them, or if Russia ever threatens anybody in this, this new club, NATO, that we're forming, we will all agree to get together and go beat up Russia. We will go kill everybody in Russia, or we'll, we'll take huge military action against them. So it's basically a military, I hate Russia club is what NATO is. So Russia is hanging out, doing its bad stuff, just like all governments do bad stuff to their people. You have to extort them, and they're working with central banks, no doubt, and they're oppressing them, no doubt, and they're, they're doing a lot of bad stuff, minding their own business, doing bad stuff. And along comes Ukraine, who is their border neighbor, and says, you know what, we're going to join the I Hate Russia club. And as part of us joining that club, there will, of course, be military bases 30 feet on the other side of the border who can easily strike out and destroy Russia. And Russia says, wait a minute, are you kidding me? We've been through this before. No, our government will not let your government do that because we... we we need a buffer zone, and you, sorry to talk down to you and be condescending, but you're a little country, we're big guys, and we are not going to have a border neighbor as an enemy, as, a, as an outspoken enemy. You join NATO, you're basically saying, I am opposed to Russia, I'm going to keep my peace at this moment, but if it ever kicks off, man, I'm killing the Russian government people, their employees, their soldiers. And Ukraine says, well, no, we're going to do it anyway. <clears throat> We've got all these other major governments who are supporting us in doing this. Screw you, Russia. And Russia says, listen, neighbors, we're serious about this. Think about this. Would you want an enemy to be camped on your doorstep? We do not want you to be our enemy. We want you to be neutral. Do not be our enemy. And Russia is trying to think that the Russian politicians are trying to think of ways to tell the Ukrainian politicians, listen, this would be just like an I hate the United States club. Maybe the United States thinks uh, that those are uh, Islamic terrorists or something. Um, we're going to have this I hate the United States club, that these, this Islamic terrorist club, and they are going to make really good friends with the people in Canada right on the border of the United States, really close where it'd be an easy missile strike to get some major U.S. cities. Do you think the United States would be okay with that? And, and Russia's giving this kind of example, and they're, they're, they're trying to explain, don't do this. Don't do this. It will end badly for all of us. Please do not do this. 
Well, and here we are today. Ukraine politicians are getting wealthy. Russian politicians are getting wealthy. The arms industry is getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. And guess who's funding all of this? Yep. The central banks of the world. Boy, oh boy, are the owners of those getting really wealthy. Don't you think it's about time the United States borrows some more money at ridiculous interest rates from the Federal Reserve Private Bank? Of course it's time. After all, we have to support the poor little innocent blonde-haired virgin girls in Ukraine. Listen, how, how beautiful of a, an innocent little picture can we paint of these poor victim Ukrainian people? Now, this little overview I've given isn't complete. It does not include all of the bad things that Ukrainian government officials have done over the years. It does not include all of the bad things that U.S. government and Chinese government and German government and Russian government employees and their agents have done over the years. Politicians have all done many, many bad things. But today, as things stand, Russia is saying, we want a buffer zone. We don't want enemies on our doorstep. Now, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I can tell you one thing. You can send me one of those little cute yellow and blue flags. I'm not going to wave it. I would, need to, I would need to be persuaded about which side is right in this case. And let's keep in mind here, probably an even bigger issue is that the people of Ukraine don't have a problem with the people of Russia. Those are cousins. Those are friends. They don't have a problem with each other. It's the governments that have a problem with each other. And the government is, as often, well, is almost always the case. Putin is going to send his employees to kill and be killed by his enemy's employees. Is that ridiculous? It's not like the employee for the Ukrainian government has a problem with the Russian government or the Russian people. It's not like the Russian employee has a problem with the Ukrainian government or the Ukrainian employee. These are politicians who have problems with each other. And rather than get their hands dirty, they're going to send their employees' children their employees, their nation's children, over to another place to be killed and to kill. Maybe that's all right. Maybe that's a good and dandy way for human beings to interact with each other. Maybe one side in this conflict is completely right and innocent and lovely, and the other side is absolutely evil and horrible. Maybe that's the case. But I don't think so.